coming up on show 713, the Model Y is being stockpiled at Fremont and the first images of the inside hit the internet. Plus, we're talking Tesla China. Building continues. BYD delivering electric buses and street scooter delivering bad news. The Mercedes-Benz EQE in the news and the CEO of ChargePoint. What does he spend his own hard-earned money on? We'll find out on the podcast today. Well, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily, the edition for the last day of the week and the first day of a brand new month, Sunday 1st of March. My name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story I can find so you don't have to. A new Patreon premium partners to announce on the podcast over the next couple of days. I'm meeting one of them on Tuesday to record a quick thing to play you, and I've emailed uh, the other person, I'll say no more, but just to say, what do you want me to say, and how do we say your name, but it's amazing, thank you very much to uh, to people signing on and supporting this podcast, double thumbs up to those people. So the Model Y is being stockpiled at Fremont, Tesla has begun preparations for the first set of Model Y deliveries that are scheduled to take place as early as March 15th. Car carriers loaded with Tesla's all-electric crossover have been spotted all over the weekend, and stockpiling the Model Y at the company's factory lot in Fremont in California as well, says Gene at Tesla Arty, and they have to get them shipped out of there because there's not actually the most amount of storage space at Fremont where they actually build the cars. So there will be a steady stream now of car transporters coming and going, obviously arriving empty and leaving full of Model Ys, And normally when Tesla have launched a new car, this has been the way they do it. It always goes to California first. But what's interesting, what's different about the Model Y is that people, people have ordered the car and pre-ordered it from all across, it seems, all across the States, all across North America, actually. We've heard from people in Canada saying... I've had my confirmation email, or at least I've logged into my Tesla account to say, prepare for delivery. It, it seems, at least it seems, unless these cars are heading off to maybe Tesla showrooms so people can have a look at them, it seems if these are customer cars... They're going all over the country, and that is a very different way of approaching it. And you know what? Also, Tesla have been really, really quiet about this as well. They're quietly getting on with the job. Uh, There must be a variety of reasons they're doing that, or maybe they're just under-promising and over-delivering. Tesla enthusiast Wilson Lamb has shared some photos of a fleet of Model Y being loaded onto car carriers over the weekend. Well, that's a signal that the electric car maker is in the final stages of delivery preparation, says Tesla Arty. Now, look, while it's unclear if the Model Y vehicles spotted in car haulers are display or are for showrooms or are for real customers or... Maybe they're these other cars that are going to the Founders Editions. We don't know because there was going to be a Founders Edition Model Y. We've heard very little about that in recent weeks and months. The fleets of Tesla cars have been seen a mostly deep blue metallic, pearl white multi-coat and red multi-coat, joining dozens of Model Y sightings all over the state of California. For what it's worth, my favourite at the moment is the deep blue metallic. I just think that looks such a stunning car when you see that on the Model Y. What's your favourite colour, though? Have you maybe got an order in yourself? You can let me know how you're feeling, what the state of your order is. Have you had the confirmation? Are you preparing for delivery? Whereabouts in the USA do you listen to this podcast? I'd love to know. I'd love to aggregate all the uh, the listener feedback just so that, well, just so that I can learn more, but I'll pass it on to the rest of the listeners as well. The first images of the Model Y interior have been spotted in the wild, and that means they went onto the internet. A user on Twitter called Mr. Lee Tesla, no relation, I'm sure, uh, spotted in the back two USB C charging ports in the rear, on the rear vent cover, and a 12 volt outlet in the trunk as well. Not sure what the power outlet is on the USB chargers. Didn't even know there was going to be USB chargers on the Model Y until today. And that reminds me of a tweet that I saw, oh, it must be almost a year ago to the day. It was the 5th of March, 2019. Have you heard of the user on Twitter, Everyday Astronaut? If you're anything in to do with SpaceX and Elon and all those kind of things, I'm sure you would have heard of Everyday Astronauts. And if you follow him on Twitter, 5th of March last year, I remember him tweeting Elon Musk to go, please, 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 can we have USB-Cs that are very high-powered, like 60 watts, so we can 
power all of our current stuff. I mean, you are basically sitting on a massive DC battery these days in an EV. And then, almost a year later, we see a picture go online of a Model Y with USB-C chargers. It's a small point, I know, but I wonder if Elon ever saw that tweet and passed it on to the engineers who are making the car. Just another way that the Model Y is subtly different in many ways, and more ways than many people realise than the Model 3. I've been guilty, I've been very guilty, actually, over the weeks and months of this podcast, of believing, well, you know, not that anyone was lying, but back when the Model Y was first talked about, it was a case of, well, it shares nearly all of the parts with the Model 3, and so basically it's going to be a Model three that's a little bit taller and then various hints have been dropped along the way one of the most recent ones being on the earnings call it was either elon or one of the uh, one of the people on the, the call saying you know you'll be surprised maybe it was drew you'd be surprised how few parts the cars share i'm paraphrasing here it was something like actually there's not as much crossover as people keep talking about it was in a, a you know it was in response to someone saying look isn't it just basically the same as a model 3 but a little bit bigger and the more we see the more we wonder how much is different my mind goes back to an article maybe 2 or 3 years ago when the ramp of the model 3 was just beginning and it was an article about a a new patent application of the wiring loom for the model Y which was many, many, many times shorter than the Model 3. And so, again, it wasn't just a case of they're using all the Model 3 bits and making them in the Model Y. Now, we won't know until the Model Y is in the wild and someone tears one down, heartbreakingly. They buy one and rip it into bits and every nut and bolt. But it needs to be done, and I'm sure competitors will be doing that the day that they can get their hands on it. They all will, actually. They'll be buying Model Ys and shipping them around the world and disassembling them to work out what have Tesla done here. And I'd love to know things like... Is the wiring loom different? I know it's nerdy and geeky, but that story was a couple of years ago, and then we heard nothing more, nothing more about it, and why would we? It just went quiet. And so all these little things that make me wonder how different the Model Y is to the Model 3, and, well, there you go, another example, USB-C chargers. And what about making the Model Y in different Giga factories? We know that Model Y will be made in Giga Berlin. I was speculating earlier today on Twitter, someone was asking about right-hand drive version of the Model Y. And we heard Elon talk recently about what a faff it is to retool the factory to make right-hand drive versions of anything, really. They do, obviously, and there's not the most amount of markets around the world, selfishly here in GB. Yes, we'd like as many right-hand drive Teslas being made as possible, of all EVs being made by all EV companies. And Elon was saying, we do it, but we lose time because we have to stop the line and retool. And I was speculating today on Twitter, and I don't know what you think about this idea, actually whether Fremont will never make any right-hand drive Model 3s. I wonder if Giga Berlin will be the Giga factory that makes all of the right-hand drive Model Ys between, obviously, lots of left-hand drive versions for all of the other European countries uh, apart from here. Well, Tesla China has started construction on Phase 2 of Giga Shanghai. This is going to support Tesla Model Y being built in China. The work started immediately after Phase... We'll call it Phase 1.5. That was for battery and powertrain workshops to be built. That's in addition to the main Giga factory to build Model 3 in Shanghai. A new drone video. There's always drone videos in uh, in, in in the Shanghai and Berlin in uh, as well. In the video, Jason Yang calls it Phase 3. The website nextbigfuture.com has linked through to the video on YouTube, and I'll pop a link to that in the show notes if you'd like to read more and see more about how the Model Y line, the building at least, is starting to be constructed. Okay, moving on, and let's talk electric buses next. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti announced this week that the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, the LADOT, placed the largest order for electric buses in US history. 134 of them will come from BYD. The record-breaking order helps advance the core goals of his recently signed executive directive, leading by example, LA's Green New Deal, which includes measures to make the bus fleet in Los Angeles entirely emissions-free, and that's in time for the opening ceremonies of the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games, which I didn't realise were going to be in LA. But there you go, I've learned something new today. Let's talk about a very rare, very rare piece 
of negative news around EVs. Street scooter. They are electric vans for postal delivery made by, Deu- made by Deutsche Post. They're going to cease production. Deutsche Post and DHL announced they are ceasing the manufacturing of street scooter. The electric vans, they're going to stop before the end of the year. The group's CEO has given up on finding a buyer for the subsidiary, even though it looked as if China's cherry was as good as a deal done, writes Electrive. Street Scooter wants to concentrate now on the operation of the current fleet. That comprises 11,000 electric vans doing postal delivery, expanded by or expanded to 15,000 by the end of the year. Less than six months ago, Street Scooter and the Chinese EV maker were signing letters of intent for a joint venture. The German Chancellor Angela Merkel did a trip to China, and there was a big fanfare back then in September. Cherry and Street Scooter announced they were going to set up a joint venture in China. And now, unfortunately, it's the end of the road for Street Scooter. That's a, a sad, sad piece of news there. Making EV. This is a brutal business, isn't it? Anyone that can actually do it, make a profit, even do it successfully, is really, really uh, rolling uh, rocks uphill, aren't they? Let's talk about Mercedes. I talked about Mercedes Benz a fair bit lately. The Mercedes Benz, this time though, the EQE. Could this be our first look? The E Class's electric brother, Mercedes Benz electrification push, will continue with three new hybrids planned for release later this year and the fully electric EQA. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing the EQA. If it's anything like the EQC, it'll be smaller, but the fit and finish and the quality and the sheer just class of the EQC. I know you're going to tell me about the range and it ain't great. But everything else about that that car is just stunning. Mm, don't use the voice activated AI thingy that'll help get turn it off. T- turn it off. Never use it. However, everything else is just amazing. Uh, a product presentation from December last year hinted that we could see the EV flagship of the brand, the EQS, coming soon. EQS is going to be a sedan. Turns out there might be yet another one in the works, and a video that we've seen today could be our very first look at it, says Yahoo. The clip shows two Mercedes-Benz prototypes, and one of them is very obviously the EQS, which we've mentioned. The other one, though, however, it's shorter. It's a modified body, and that hints at what we could be looking at, the Mercedes-Benz EQ. E. Fully electric. It's going to be an electric version of today's E-Class, similar to what the EQS is, similar to the S-Class. Now, I'm not sure whether the body shape, this what we're looking at, it's not a big enough car. Maybe the body shape is going to be different. But if you think about electrifying the E-Class, this is an executive class of car. I think it's fair to say... I'll stick my finger in the air and take a, a just a massive punt on this one. You've got to say dual motors, 350 miles of range, funky stuff like air suspension, big battery, sort of 80 kilowatt hour plus. It's got to be, hasn't it, for an expensive electric version of the E-Class, even for the S-Class as well. You know that Mercedes-Benz are going to put the specs really high on these cars, and I, for one, can't wait until they have more electric Mercedes-Benz on the roads. So... Put yourself in the shoes of someone who runs a charging infrastructure company. What EV would you buy? Well, let me explain. When it came time for Pasquale Romano, or Pascal Romano, I should say, the CEO of the charging company, Charge Point, he had to choose the next car that he was going to buy. And it was always going to be an EV, right? Because he runs an electric vehicle charging company. He's the CEO. It was always going to be an EV, but what was he going to buy? Well, he has revealed what he bought. And it is, drumroll please, a Tesla Model Y. The decision was either going to be a Model Y or a Ford Mustang Mark E, says Business Insider. Ultimately, Model Y won out due to its release date and his experience with a Model S, Romano told Business Insider. Well, on paper, the Model Y and the Mark E are similar in many areas. The Model Y has an edge on range, has an edge on starting price, has an edge on seating capacity and cargo space, and it remains to be seen which of the two EVs shoppers will prefer. Of course, Ford has many buyers who who've never thought about an EV until now, but they are Ford buyers, as in their brand loyal. And so we'll see how many they sell. There's been signs from Tesla and Ford suggesting that each one could end up ranking among the best-selling EVs. Originally, they were 
Not talking down the number of the Mustang Mark E's that they could sell, but I did think the numbers which were being banded around to begin with, like 10,000 of them, seemed very low. But from the latest whispers I'm hearing, it's multiples of that. And that's great news. Let's talk about question of the week this week. I was asking you how to persuade friends and family and colleagues to go EV. Martin Young says, My next door neighbour is a Porsche certified instructor, teaches new owners how to handle their cars. Uh, we had a go in my Chevy Volt, took it for a spin. For about three minutes, he began to smile and was amazed at the performance. Going up a steep and curvy mountain road, he was having fun, laughed out loud, and then when he came back, he shook his head and said, thank you, I had no idea. So to fellow EV owners, uh, Martin Young says this, you don't have to convince your friends and family that EVs are great, all you have to do is convince them to drive your car. Once they're behind the wheel, the car will show them how great EVs really are. Leanne Roberts says the only way to convince them is to get them in one first as a passenger and then to get them to drive one the way we got into EVs was through driving my brother's Nissan Leaf there are other options out there like EV experience days and companies like Tri EV here in the UK and if you haven't checked out what they're all about go and have a look at Tri EV all about getting you to well yeah you, you guessed it, try EVs. You can do things like experience days through Octopus EV as well, which is a great idea. You can test one and get rid of any FUD. And uh, Leanne says, I do think that driver's days and dealership deals for weekend test drives would help increase the uptake. I agree with you, Leanne. If only dealers wanted to sell EVs. There's a handful of dealers that I think want that are really good at selling EVs. Companies like uh, DSG in Morecambe, whether it's or whatever you want, whether it's a Renault or a Hyundai or more. Go and uh, give Will a shout at DSG in Morecambe. I went to collect my car, uh, the second Zoe that we got. Will said, that's all right, we can, what we always do is we can put it on a trailer and bring it down to you. They do that lots with plenty of customers who don't live near Morecambe. It's a fair way from many places. And I said, no way. I'm coming to get it. I want to drive that one home. And so a, a little look around. Great workshop he has there as well. Absolutely fascinating. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Robert Pryor says, I'm about ready to tell people not to buy an EV. You see, it's reverse psychology. And at the very least, I don't have to hear the, their lame reasons why EVs aren't for them. Stephen Troyer on YouTube says how to persuade someone to buy an EV. Buy one yourself, offer test rides. Step three, live with an EV and answer questions, what it's like, how it's holding up. And I remember a news item from this show, he says, uh, saying that the number one influence on people buying EVs is their friends buying EVs. Absolutely. It's very much a case of... What's this electric vehicle thing all about then? And trusting recommendations from friends and family and work colleagues. On YouTube, DRK says, if you can bear to let someone get behind the wheel, let them borrow your car. Maybe from a Thursday to a Sunday. Make sure you have a tracker in it, though, because they won't want to give it back. Living with an EV... Not just a quick test will do all the work. Peter Zerfus says, how to persuade someone to EV? Give them the key card and give them 30 seconds. I love it. And you know what? I didn't think that question through. It was a good question of the week, how to make someone go EV in 2020. But you know what? The answer, of course, is get them to experience one. Whether it's somewhere like here in GB, we have something called the EV Experience Centre in Milton Keynes. It's actually inside a shopping centre. Uh, but you know what? Because they're electric vehicles, you can have them indoors. They haven't got fuel tanks full of, oh, you know, massively explosive petrol. So you can't normally do things like uh, put cars inside shopping centres unless you go through a real rigmarole of draining the tank and health and safety. You know what? It's fine. They're EVs. <laughs> nice and safe. So whether it's like that or whether it's, I, I mentioned Try EV or whether it's dealers who are willing to say, look, there's the keys. Just try it. Have a go. Let us know what you think. And if it's not for you, it's all right. It's not going to be for everybody, but at least give it a go. Let me try with a different question of the week then. I'd love you to send me your answers to this, and I'll read it out on next Sunday's show. So, I'm waving a magic wand and installing a charge point of any speed and of any type, anywhere, free of charge for you. Tell me, what is it? Where is it? And why? Have some fun with this one. 
I'm footing the bill. Let's pretend I'm footing the bill. And I'll pop a charge point of any type, of any speed, anywhere, free of charge and just for you. Where is it? What is it? And why? Tell me. Uh, you can email me hello at evnewsdaily.com and a comment on the YouTube show is always appreciated. Well, there are 235 patrons of the podcast. I'll add to those numbers very soon. Thank you to premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, and Brightsmith for clean tech talent. My partners as well, David Allen, OEM Audio of New Zealand, and evpower.co.nz. If you want your accessories in New Zealand. Hello, Paul. Paul O'Connor, tryv.com, Gareth Hamer, thank you, Gareth, eMobility Norway, and Bob Boothby. Uh, top chap. Thank you, Bob. All partners of this podcast and all the exec producers. Love to give you mention once a week. Alan Robson, Alan Shedd, Alex Banahini, Alexander Frank, Anders Hove, Andrea Jefferson, Asir Khalid, Ashley Hill, Biard Fuchsnack, Brent Kingsford, Brian Thompson, Brian Weatherall, Bruce Bohannon, Charles Hall, Chris Hopkins, Colin Hennessy, Craig Coles, Craig Rogers, Damian Davis, Darren Bird, Darren Feach, Darren Sant, Yorkshire EVs, Dave Dewson, David Barkman, David Finch, David Partington, David Prescott, Derek Riley, and the Dublin EV Owners Club. Don McAllister at screencastsonline.com. Enrico Stefanchillo, Eru, uh, Kieun Nyombi, Frederick Rovick, Frijul, who's James, Gene Rubin, Jeff Lowe, Headley Wright, Ian Griffith, Ian Sear, Jack Oakley, James Store, Jerry Allison, Jim Duggan, Jim Morris, John Bailey, John C. Solar, John Lacey at Click Clack Video NZ, and John Biddy McBeardface and Ken TVs, John Lodell, Juan Gonzalez, Ken Morris, Kevin Mayerson, Carl Mayen, Last Allager, Lawrence DeAnnon, Lee Brown, Luke Cully, Marcel Lohman, Marcel Ward, Mark Bossett, Marlin Shell, Matt Piscioni, Majar, Mia Oppelstrop, Michael and Luke Turrell, Michael Pastroni, Michael Cuffin, Mike Rogers, Mike Winter, Nathan Gore Brown, Neil Lee Roberts from Sussex EVs, Nigel Miles, Northern Explorers, Ohad Aston, Paul Ridings, Paul Shelley, Paul Stevenson, Perry Simpkins, Pete Glass, Pete Gorton, Peter and D. Roberts of Oxen EVs. Uh, the Phil Mouche, just, just, <laughs> just Phil Mouche. I don't know why I called him the Phil Mouche. It's very late. Phil Mouche, Pondus Kinblad, Raj Badwell, Rajiv Nari, and Ralph Jensen, uh, Rene Schneider, Rob Cooling at AppleDriving.co.uk, who was tweeting today only about his Nissan Leaf that's done 40,000 plus miles, not lost any of its battery, and is still going great guns and loves his Nissan Leaf. Rob Hermans, Robert Grace, Robin Tanner, Rupert Mitchell, Sari Kanga, Sodja, Saiki Payne, Stephen Penn, Stephen John, uh, Steve John, Thomas JTS, The Plug Seekers, EV YouTube channel, Tim Gutteridge, and William Langhorn, thank you very much. Did I mention Colin Hennessy and Cam's EV or Cambridgeshire EV Owners Club? A wonderful resource for Cambridgeshire here in the G uh, in, in the GB. Oh goodness me, I've lost the ability to speak in the UK. Uh, Cambridgeshire EV. Uh, Colin Hennessy is uh, is doing that and in his spare time and bringing people together. I think I need to go to bed, don't you? Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, today and for bearing with me while I got behind and now I'm catching up uh, another couple of podcasts coming soon and we'll be back on schedule before you know it have a wonderful day catch you tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid <laughs>